Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Terraform outputs. Now, when using Terraform, there are going to be times when you need to pull information out of your either cloud infrastructure or just some you know resources that you want to maybe automate with some type of code. But to do this, um, outputs allows you to take what you have and grab information out of it without having to say go through the GUI and a bunch of other you know steps that could take longer to do so when using terraform um, what you can do is say you're building an environment like an aws vpc which i have here and typically you got your um, required terraform required blocks you know it might have some route tables and then obviously like the vpc setup so inside of that you might have some elastic ip addresses um, could be some subnets could be a CIDR range, various different things. But as you build this environment, you're gonna maybe want to know, like, hey, what is my Elastic IP address? If not, you would have to go in through the, uh, basically the um, GUI, sign in, go to the, the uh, Elastic IP address um, uh, portal, and all the other extra steps. So to do this the easy way, what you can do is, say this is the folder you're working in. And I got my main.tf, routable.tf, vpc.tf. I'm going to create another file called outputs. Now, it doesn't have to be called outputs.tf. You don't have to put it in the outputs.tf, but I like to keep them separated. That way, it's easier to know kind of what's what I'm working with. So to create an output, basically, it's pretty simple here. So the only thing you need to do is put an output and I'm using Visual Studio Code, so there are some um, things that kind of help guide you along the way. So like if I was to press click on that, it basically shows what's needed next. Now this name part is going to be the um, name that you want to name your output. Now it doesn't have to be any specific name, but you typically want to make it something that's uh, easily identifiable. So I'm going to call this AWS underscore EIP. And you know you got a description. So the elastic IP address of the AWS VPC. So you can put whatever description you want. You don't have to put one. I recommend putting one just so that if someone was to come behind you and s try to see what this does, it'll help them uh, understand what's going on. So then you got a value. So now the value you get this from is I'm going to show you under so basically wherever you're wanting to grab this from so as you can see AWS EIP.net so that's going to be the elastic IP address but there's also a way to kind of see what other values you can kind of grab off of so I'm going to go to Terraform's website go to the registry go to browse providers and then under AWS Let's go to the documentation here. So we're looking at EIP, so the Elastic IP address. So as you can see, there's other various arguments down here, like we got um, public public IP, private IP, things like that, uh, association ID, allocation ID, but I'll also show you a way you can view what you want inside Terraform. So what I'm gonna do initially is, I'm just gonna do AWS EIP.net. This is going to grab everything. So to see what this um, brings out or pulls from our um, current environment, I'm going to do a Terraform Terraform output. And if you press enter, nothing's going to come up. That's because no output's been found. So when you run this, you need to run and apply as well. So you can do a Terraform plan to see what's gonna change, and then you can do a Terraform apply, and I'm just gonna do an auto approve. Since I already know what I wanna change. And as you can see at the bottom, it's gonna output every single thing down here in the, in the uh, bottom. So you can see it outputted address, allocation ID, customer owned IP, um, private IP, everything for this here. Uh, I got public IP, 
So I only want the public IP. So what I'm going to do is go .NET dot public IP. Save that. Save that, and then let's run this again. Actually, let's clear the screen, and then run that again. Now what you're going to see is we're only going to get the the Elastic IP address down here at the bottom. So now if I do a Terraform output, again, it should only show me the Elastic IP address. Now, uh, let's say you want to grab another value. Let's say, you know, we go into our VPC and let's say we want to grab the CIDR block of the VPC. So we can go, let's do, let's say, let's just say the subnet here. So let's go in and do outputs. We want to do another output call this, you know, AWS underscore subnet. And then, you know, again, a description. And the subnet of the VPC. Or actually, you know what, the, let's do the CIDR. AWS CIDR. We're going to grab the CIDR block. And then the CIDR range of the VPC. So then if I go into our VPC here, and let's see if we can find where that would be at. Resource subnet availability zones. Okay, so we got AWS, it's gonna be inside the value, is gonna be AWS underscore VPC dot solder block and now we got dot public ip dot solder block so if i run i need to run my apply, uh, apply again to uh, make the changes go through and then now as you see i got a solder block and an aws eip now if you see this is just in like a regular formatted way um doesn't really show much but let's say you want to grab, like, say, the JSON output of this. You want to suck it into, like, maybe some automation of some sort. So what you can do is you can actually do a Terraform output dash JSON and get the JSON output of your file. So this could be used for, say, uh, another program of some sort. Um, maybe you got, like, a custom dashboard. So, you know, if I was to take these off, and say you wanted more information on your environment, you could essentially save this file. Just run our um, apply again. And you'll see that it will create it all. And then now we can run our JSON. So as you can see, it's still kind of in this normal just block format. I put in our JSON. So as you can see, it's in like a JSON format now. So now you can say do some type of automation, scripting to pull in and suck in these values that you want for various different things, whether it be a dashboard, custom software. So that's just a good way to kind of use outputs um, variously around your um, environment. Um, it could be for various things, kind of seeing what changes. Um, you know, if you, you got elastic load balancers, um, different types of EC2 instances. Maybe you need to know the IP addresses on them, monitoring if anything changes in your environment. So a lot of good things you can do with outputs. It's really simple. Um, uh, probably go more into depth on some other various uh, ways you could utilize outputs, um, maybe for like data resources, stuff like that. So again, you know, uh, if you have any questions, again, uh, drop a comment down below. I'll be, I'll be sure to answer anything I can. Again, you know, you can always, like I said, reach me on uh, my website here. If you have any questions, I usually post some of these um, in um, blog articles. And again, my YouTube channel, it's Let Me Tech You. And you can see all these other videos that are great as well if you're watching this from the blog. So again, uh, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.